I am Lila of Nevilution, and I'll be commenting on Neville Goddard's book, I Know My Father, published in 1960. And while I do so, enjoy the scenes from my vacation this year to Sapporo, Hokkaido, Japan, which is in northern Japan. My husband and I stayed at a wonderful hotel that was part of the Sapporo station. We also got to visit a candy factory as well as a beer museum. I hope you'll all have a chance to one day come to Japan if you haven't already. In Chapter 1, I Am Neville says, No longer look for your father in time and space, for your father is the awareness that is now. I and my father are one, but my father is greater than I. My awareness and that which I am aware of being are one, but I am greater than that which I am aware of being. The conceiver will ever be greater than his conception. The father, consciousness, is greater than his son, conception of himself. Now your eyes are opened. Your father, God Almighty, has been revealed to you as your awareness of being. So what I feel Neville is saying here is that when you know that you're beyond the body and mind, that your consciousness, the one that's creating, the awareness that hears these words now, and in a sense, the sun is this manifested body and mind that you take yourself for and all the things in the world. But he's given you the key, the door to everything, to realize you are the awareness and you can direct that awareness. You can immerse yourself with the energy of that, what you want to fulfill in your life as though it already is. In chapter two, I come with a sword. Neville says, if you are identified with race, creed, or color, and hear that which you are identified, criticized, and condemned, you will be automatically hurt by such criticism. Every attachment is a bar in your self-created prison. Your only escape lies in non-attachment. You must leave all and follow me. In Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew, bond nor free. Your present attachments are rooted in you because of your present conception of yourself. Your conception of yourself is the measuring rod by which you measure the world. And I feel what Neville is saying here is that if you really want to become a master of your fate, your imagination, all that you experience, you must rise above the limitations of the body and mind and all that afflict the body and mind from that level. If you want the powers of the God, you're going to have to take a leap of faith and think like a God. Everything on this level of body and mind is part of the dream of life and will only hold you in limitation. You can still play in it, but you must go beyond it to know your true self, that beyond all limitations, that which is eternal. Neville goes on, change your conception of yourself, revalue yourself, and you will automatically change your world. Man has always played the losing game by attempting to change his world while he himself remained with his present values or conceptions of himself. Freedom is not won by the sweat of the brow. Stop wrestling with the world. It is only a reflector. So with what Neville is saying here, this is probably what trips up a lot of people, because when they want to change, they're used to trying to make a change on the outside. The idea that the change comes from within may seem like a riddle to many. And sometimes it's confusing, because when people do something on the outside, Sometimes it does seem a change happens, but somewhere along the line, people reach a point where they feel they can do no more with a limited body and mind. And many have heard or even had their own experiences of going into the spiritual, the mystical, and encountering or hearing about miracles. But this way is so foreign and people often go back to what is familiar. And you'll really have to change your paradigm because no more would you be able to blame anything on the outside when you come across these teachings that everything is a reflection of your own inner consciousness, that what you feel, especially intensely, naturally, over time, creates all the tangible experiences around you. Leave all the world behind and just be in spirit, in imagination, that which you wish to be. Nurture that and let the rest of the world unfold around that. In Chapter 3, The Foundation Stone, Neville says, There is only one power, and this power is God. Consciousness. It kills, it makes alive, it wounds, it heals. It does all things good, bad, or indifferent. A prisoner must have a jailer, a slave, a master, 
a nation that feels itself to be imprisoned will automatically create a dictator. You could no more rub out a tyrant by destroying him than you can your reflection by destroying the mirror. The consciousness of a nation produces its leaders. That which is true of a nation is true of an individual, for nations are made up of individuals. Man moves in a world that is nothing more nor less than his consciousness objectified. Not knowing this, he wars against his reflections, while he keeps alive the light and the images which throw the reflections. I am the light of the world. I am. Consciousness is the light. That which I am conscious of being, my conception of myself. The world is the mirror magnifying all that I am conscious of being. Stop trying to change the world. It is only a mirror telling you who you are. So in this Neville is saying, don't get lost in all that goes on in the world. It all comes from one cause, consciousness. And everything that exists in the world, in your life, is because you felt something. So rather than blaming or attacking the outside world, we must look within. What are we feeling? And we must learn to become aware and guard this like a precious garden, the garden of our minds. We must learn to feed this garden the things that we want to grow. Sometimes we forget the power of feelings and what we immerse ourselves in the world, be it with social media or people, or even just our own thoughts and daydreams. Is it something we want to grow and experience? Neville goes on to say, I do not care what men have diagnosed your problem to be. A problem might have a history ages long, yet I know it will vanish in the twinkling of an eye, if you will faithfully follow this instruction. Ask yourself this simple question. How would I feel if I were free? The very moment you sincerely ask this question, the answer comes. No man can tell another how that other would feel if his desire were suddenly realized. But everyone would know how he himself would feel, for such feeling would be automatic. So Neville teaches you to take that feeling, that feeling of the wish fulfilled, and make that your foundation stone. Wear that feeling until it becomes natural. It could take a moment, it could take a year. But as the fruits are born, the doubts will vanish. And although the state of your wish fulfilled may feel uncomfortable at times because it's unfamiliar, or maybe of fears and doubts that you don't deserve, or you're afraid to succeed, but continue to have your imaginal sessions, and it will become natural, and it will outpicture. In a sense, you've become hypnotized to the old state, but simply reject it, and continue to wear the state that is your savior, the feeling of the wish fulfilled. In chapter 4, The I'm Pression, Neville says, When the widow was asked, What had she in her house? There is recognition of substance, now in her claim of three drops of oil, not empty measures. Three drops became a gusher if claimed, for your awareness magnifies all that it is conscious of being. What Neville is saying here is simply that what we become aware of, what we focus on, grows. Now some people may feel that their life is upside down. It might be hard for them to even realize there's anything good, but that's only going to magnify and perpetuate what they don't want. You have to be able to learn to see any goodness, even like this widow, three drops of oil. You're alive, your heart beats, the fresh air, the sky, the sun rising, the beautiful flowers that blossom, a beautiful song, a good meal, whatever it is. Start to realize all the good that is there and be thankful because it will grow and this will make more fertile grounds for you to manifest even more that you want. In chapter 5, he who has. Neville says, For he that hath, to him shall be given, and to he that hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Though many look upon this statement to be the most cruel and unjust of the sayings attributed to Jesus, creating as it has the world over the many popular remarks, such as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, it still remains a most just and merciful law based upon a changeless principle, that God, the imagination, is no respecter of persons. It is the unconditioned awareness that gives to each and all that which they are aware of being, that God, the unconditioned awareness, gives to each and all that which they are aware of being. To be aware of being or having anything 
is to be or have that which you are aware of being. It is impossible for anything to be other than that than which it is aware of being. So what I feel Neville is saying here is that even though there might seem to be injustice in the world, it all stems from the spiritual laws. Whatever our consciousness becomes aware of, especially on a continual and natural and intense basis, that is what we become. That is what we reflect in our tangible experiences. And many are simply feeling based on what their environment shows them and just perpetuating their current environment. If you see others have what you wish to have, how does it feel to have it as well? Catch that feeling and revisit this feeling until you live there, thus creating and sustaining it in your life. In Chapter 6, Circumcision, Neville says, Indifference is the knife that severs. Feeling is the tie that binds. When you can look upon man as one great brotherhood without distinction of race, creed, or color, then you will know that you have severed these adhesions. With these ties cut, all that now separates you from your true being is your belief that you are man. To remove the last veil, you just drop your conception of yourself as a man by knowing yourself just to be. Instead of the consciousness of I am man, let there be just I am, faceless, formless, awareness, then unveiled and awake, you will declare and know that I am as God, and beside me, this awareness, there is no God. Jesus, or Lord, symbolizes your awareness of being, whose secrets are hidden by the towel, consciousness of man. In short, the removing of the belief that you are man reveals your awareness as the head of creation, Man is the foreskin hiding the head of creation. I am the Lord hidden by the veil of man. So I feel what Neville is teaching here is the art of indifference, and to realize how powerful our feelings are, that they bind us, those feelings create of its own like nature. And in this chapter, Neville is teaching you how to become indifferent. Right now, people are attached to being a human, and all that goes along with being a human, a name, an address— but all these attachments limit people, because they all come with their own conditions. But what if the mystics like Neville are right, and we are beyond body and mind, and that is where you touch upon what you call the miracles of life? So to know this, Neville is teaching you, let go of all the conditions past I am. Simply contemplate on I am, that awareness that hears these words now, beyond body, beyond mind, beyond time, beyond space, beyond all conditions that eternal, vast, great consciousness beyond all words. You're being taught this is your true nature, and if you can come from this, then you can manifest anything because you're beyond limits. So I recommend that each day, find that sweet spot and learn to just feel to be the I am. It might seem foreign at first, but practice makes perfect, and it will be worth it, because limitations are what cause suffering. Identity with being a limited man is a foreskin, that keeps you from all the miracles, all the things greater than you could ever imagine. In Chapter 7, Crucifixion and Resurrection, Neville beautifully says, Heaven is not a locality, it is a state of consciousness. How many believed the heaven was something above the clouds? But what we come to find with these great mystics, beyond our true nature of a vast eternal consciousness, everything is just states. We fall in and out of states, usually unintentionally. But now with these teachings, we can intentionally move. Why not move ourselves into the state of heaven? Heaven on earth, even perfectly balanced with a state of heaven beyond earth. Isn't it wonderful to be reminded and thus to become aware of the wonderful things in life we could easily manifest? We could just as easily manifest as all the nightmares in life that are often unintentionally manifested. In Chapter 8 no other God. Neville says, Every belief in powers apart from yourself, whether for good or evil, will become the molds of the graven images you will worship. The belief in the potency of drugs to heal, diets to strengthen, monies to secure, are the values or money changers that must be thrown out of the temple. Therefore, stop transferring the power that you are to things round about you, Claim yourself to be the power which you have in your ignorance given to another. So what Neville is saying here is that ultimately everything is created, sustained, destroyed by you. And in essence, nothing on the outside is needed. 
but this may seem a big leap for many. So what I recommend is continue to practice this imagination and develop it. Don't always go after what seems like the Olympics, but also include the things that are more within reach to build that imagining muscle, and thus the faith muscle. And as you start to develop successes and conviction, then you can reach that state where there's nothing you can't do, perhaps even literally turning water into wine or walking on the water. There have been great stories of great mystics who have done things that are just unbelievable. But we can't truly judge until we put this law to the test. And as it proves itself going all the way, from perhaps mistaking ourself as simply a human, to realizing ourselves, to the gods that make up the one great brotherhood of the vast eternal consciousness. Neville also says, Stir up the gift within you. Stop begging and claim yourself to be which you were begging for. Do this, and you too will jump from your crippled world into the world of freedom, singing praises of the Lord, I am. Far greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, this cry of everyone who finds his awareness of being to be God. So what Neville is saying here, whatever you want, claim that you are already that. Claim it in a way that catches the feeling as if it was already so. And then you will realize you're more than a human, you're part of a greater self beyond this world. Chapter 9. Thy Will Be Done Neville says, When a sculptor looks at a formless piece of marble, he sees buried within it its formless self, his finished piece of art. So the sculptor, instead of making his masterpiece, merely reveals it by removing that part of the marble which hides his conception. The same applies to you. In your formless awareness, I am lies buried all that you will ever conceive yourself to be. The recognition of this truth will transform you from that of an unskilled laborer who tries to make it so to that of a great artist who recognizes it to be so. What Neville is saying here is that everything is already done. You're a sculptor in the sense because you pick out the feelings. And as you feel the feelings of the wish fulfilled, you will transform what is to what will be, reflecting this change in your consciousness, this change of your awareness in what you feel. Neville goes on to say, If you judge after appearances, you will continue to be enslaved by the evidence of your senses. To break from this hypnotic spell of the senses you are told, go within and shut the door. The door of the senses must be tightly shut before your new claim can be honored. This closing the door of the senses is not as difficult as it first appears to be. It is done without effort. It is impossible to serve two masters at the same time. The masterman serves in that which he is conscious of being. I am the Lord and master of that which I am conscious of being. I feel what Neville is saying here is that you have to become indifferent to all that you see in the physical, tangible world, because that's reflecting your old feelings that have crystallized. If you let the outside world rule you, then you're basically reacting to your old feelings that have crystallized and you're going to perpetuate more of it. So what you must do is you must close the door to the world, to the physical world. You must go into your own little heaven, your imagination. And finally, chapter 10, Be Ears That Hear. Neville says, As long as man looks for the causes of expressions in places other than the expressor, he looks in vain. For thousands of years, man has been told, I am the life and the light of the world. No manifestation cometh unto me, save I draw it. God commands the invisible to appear by claiming himself to be the thing commanded. Now, let this saying sink deep into your ear. Be conscious of being that which you want to appear. So in other words, Neville is saying, stop looking on the outside, go within. The outside was created by the within, that's why. So if you want to change, whether it's to be something and or to have something, you simply have to be conscious of already being and having what you want. What would it feel like to be what you want to be? And or how would it feel to have what you want to have? Feel this feeling. Take this feeling into sleep. Perhaps even revisit it a few times throughout the day, even for a moment. Be willing to do it no matter how long it takes. Because your true heart's desires are worth it. You're worth it. And that's why you're hearing this. That's why you've attracted this to you. And this ends my commentary on Neville Goddard's I Know My Father, 